I'll admit it, I love the idea behind barcode games. Scanning multitudes of barcodes to provide near endless gameplay possibilities? Yes please. The main idea behind Barcode Night is to train your warrior by taking on dungeons which are randomly generated based on the barcodes that you scan. The simplicity of this game may appeal to some, but those wanting any kind of depth may be left very disappointed. The aim of the game is to take your hero, who starts at level 1, and level him up by taking on dungeons. And by dungeon, I mean short battles against a few enemies, which only take several seconds most of the time. When you do take on a dungeon, you are given close to zero control. You just watch your hero and his companion charge him from the left of the screen, and attack enemies coming from the right of the screen. But what can you do? Well, you can press a button occasionally to unleash a special move. And you can heal once, at the expense of 30 action points. But that's it. 9 out of 10 times you'll just be watching things unfold. Yay. It sounds simple, it is simple. There is very little requirement to use your brain. This game is essentially an automated grind fest. I was left wanting so much more. There's three categories of dungeons to take on. First, there's the basic random dungeons that you can enter at the expense of 5 action points. Then there's the more difficult fixed dungeons that cost 30 action points but provide a greater reward. The final type of dungeon is available free of action points. This is the one you've all been waiting for. The one that puts the barcode in barcode night. Barcode dungeons. Every barcode generates a different dungeon. There are 64 types of monsters to discover and defeat, so you'll need to scan everything you can. Raid your pantry, go shopping, scan every barcode you can find. This is a lot of fun. Aside from leveling up after loads of grinding through dungeons, you can also choose to equip your hero with different body armor, head armor, and a weapon from one of three categories. Swords which are short ranged, and staffs and bows which are long ranged. Most of the time, you'll obtain equipment by luck upon completion of a dungeon, but to become truly powerful, you'll have to forge these into stronger equipment by merging them with an item of the same name. This process is incredibly simple, and like the battle system, leaves a lot to be desired. The more you forge your weapon to increase its level, the longer it takes to forge. Some of my gear was taking in excess of 130 real-time hours to complete. Come on, that's just ridiculous. However, you can avoid this system by setting your phone date ahead a few days. Yep, I felt like a dirty cheat. Your hero doesn't go into battle alone. You can hire a randomly generated companion at the bar, and once recruited, they stay with you until they fall in battle, at which point you can pay some more money and rehire them. Some are powerful, some are overly weak, so it's just a matter of hiring the strongest companion that you can, and then sticking with them, hoping for a more powerful one to come along later. I ended up with a beast of a companion who was about 10 times stronger than anyone else I saw in the entire game. Major balancing issues here. If you want some more direction, there are some daily quests that you can take on that will grant you additional random items. Each day there are three target monsters that you can hunt down within barcodes. If you slay enough of them, you'll unlock another piece of equipment. And there you have it, barcode night. Scanning barcodes is a great feature, but unfortunately, every single other aspect of this game does not go the distance. As a result, Barcode Night was still a few hours of your life, but nothing more. If you want value for money, check out my Evo Creo review. Now that game is worth it. If you liked this review, like, subscribe, and check out some of my other videos. Thanks for watching.